Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Have, uh, an interaction concerning what is happening in the National Assembly. Uh, of Zambia. Uh, as we are speaking now, the meeting of the National Assembly is in session or is in progress. And uh, earlier in the meeting, the Assembly resolved to suspend standing orders uh, to allow the President to come tomorrow on Friday to address the nation uh, in respect of the national values and principles. And to do that, our owner, the Vice President, had to move a motion, uh, which motion must be debated. And I wanted to debate that motion. This is the reason uh, I want to speak with you. But before I do that, I just want to read for your benefit, the benefit of the public, two articles in the Constitution. I want to read Article 8 and Article 9. Article 8 of the Zambian Constitution says, and I quote, the national values and principles are A, morality and ethics, B, patriotism and national unity, C, democracy and constitutionalism, D, human dignity, equity, social justice, equality, and and discrimination e good governance and integrity and f sustainable development article 9 says and i quote one the national values and principles shall apply to the a interpretation of this constitution b enactment and interpretation of the law and C, development and implementation of state policy. Two, the president shall once every year report to the National Assembly the progress made in the application of national values and principles specified under this part. Now, tomorrow, as the president comes, it has to be clear, it is not his initiative. It is not the UPND government's initiative. It is the initiative of the expression of the Zambian people through the constitution who are compelling him to come and report how he has fared in terms of applying national values and principles in the developmental agenda of our nation. This is why this uh, afternoon, as our owner brought the motion, we, the representatives of the people, should be allowed to debate the motion. And I was stopped from debating the motion. I have to share with you that uh, there is a way in which we indicate to tender discourse on the floor of the house. Uh, sometimes we use Bosch, at other times we use E-Chamber. Today, I was the only one one member of parliament from London who indicated to speak to this motion and the speaker decided not to accord me the opportunity to talk. Instead, she began to look for a member and created the constituents uh, in a copper belt by calling somebody by the, the constituents of Kansenshi when in fact this member is an MP for Kantanshi. And anyway, uh, my honorable colleague, the MP for Kantanshi, spoke there. So I will speak here 
what I intended to speak there on the floor of the house. This is the reason I'm very happy that uh, you could come. And these are my copious notes, which I had in the house. Uh, they are the ones I'm going to use uh, to speak to the Zambian people uh, exactly what I intended to speak in the house. As the president comes tomorrow, I want to come and see how he is going to link the high cost of living to human dignity. Because it is a requirement of the Constitution that the president must come and speak how he has applied uh, his policies, or should I say how human dignity has been considered in the development of the nation. So I'll be looking for the president's uh, linkage of high cost of living, millimeal 400 quarter, electricity very expensive and lot shedding on top of expensive electricity. How is the president going to link that to human dignity? Eight hours of lot shedding that the Zambian people are suffering. I want to see how that links to patriotism. Particularly if the president, if it is true what we have heard that Zesco has been exporting power. So I want to know, power, you are not shedding the Zambian people and you are exporting power. And I want government to deny that they are not exporting power. Today the minister was on the floor of the house tendering a ministerial statement. He never spoke about the export of power. He's talking about importing of power. So I am challenging government to state whether Zesco is exporting power or not so that we can now link properly uh, patriotism and these actions of government. I want the president to come and indicate the refusal by the police to clear office bearers of UCA so that UCA can be registered. How that refusal is actually being linked to democracy because uh, I just read the pillars, democracy is one of those national values that the president will be talking about tomorrow. And I want to come and hear how the FIC report 2.8 billion United States dollars, suspicious transactions, will be linked to good governance. Okay? How is the president going to do that? To link those issues, uh, I think that he will suffer. Yesterday somewhere I said the president will really suffer tomorrow. Uh, he will suffer. To link these matters, 10% that lawyers are fighting for in the Ministry of Justice of a procurement uh, in the Ministry of uh, Health. Lawyers are fighting for 10% commission. They take each other to SEC, and SEC is not even moving as fast as they moved on Kakubo. Let them move as fast as they moved on Kakubo. Uh, that 10% they are fighting for. I want to see how the president will link it to morality, okay, in his government. Those are in this government, right? I want to see how the president will link that to morality in the UPND government. Uh, elsewhere, I talked about uh, government giving away more money. You know, like, you could pay a few more money, but pay a few more money. You could pay a few Because they disposed of a controlling stake, 51% shares, without receiving any consideration. What type of a government is this? What type of people's representatives are this? You go and sell a national asset for nothing. You understand? So now I want to see how this will be linked to uh, sustainable development. Because sustainable development is a big issue that the president will be talking about. You know, I have heard of a report uh, from uh, the uh, public protector. Uh, which report I, le I read from one newspaper article that it has been hidden in the assembly it has brought it, it has been sat on it has been also offered to uh, the executive the executive is pushing for it never to be released so I want that issue to see how it will be linked to integrity hiding reports telling people if you ever want to if you ever want to don't tell the people that uh, we are practicing nepotism don't tell people that we are practicing uh, regionalism. Don't tell people that we are uh, we are practicing, you know, cleansing. Don't hide this report. So I want to see how you are going to link that to integrity in your own government. And uh, finally, I want to see how the president will link 
the composition of chief executive officers and directors in parastatals to national unit. Because as far as I'm concerned, when you look at those people, what you are seeing is national division. I, I am expectant tomorrow, uh, I, I have heard somewhere uh, people are saying he should postpone because it will be difficult for him uh, to, to do a good job. But I'm expecting tomorrow because I'm interested in these matters. Uh, this is the second time I'm raising these matters. I could have raised them on the floor of the house, but I was stopped. I was denied an opportunity by the Speaker uh, of the National Assembly. But it is good that the media is here and uh, I have been able to establish my issues. Uh, and this is what I will do always. When I'm stopped from tendering discourse, I will find the media, at least one or two media houses to go and uh, tell the people uh, what I have in representation of the people of Monte. Thank you so much. Of course, in, in keeping with tradition, I think the, the leader of the is going to sum up after uh, my very brief contribution. Mine is, is very, very brief. Uh, I've just been prompted to also make a statement concerning how we are exploiting or how we intend to continue exploiting, you know, mining and developing our mineral resource. I have always argued that, uh, you know, minerals are an aspect of our sovereignty. You heard the Honorable Kapoor has mentioned the confusion surrounding the investment in Mopani uh, mine. There is also another confusion that has marred the investment in KCM by, the, by Vedanta. If you saw the dispatch today by Vedanta, they have actually extended the time of resumption of operations at KCM. And they have given a variety of reasons, some of the, most of which are not even convincing. But one that is very convincing is that this company out there where it operates, it is insolvent and it is going into what are called schemes of arrangement with its creditors. In fact, 67% of the shareholding of Vedanta on the London Stock Exchange has been suspended because they've been handed over to the creditors to do a scheme of arrangement. Now, I have said so many times that this is not a company you should expect to come into this country and sell you the idea but they are bringing resources to come and invest in this country. They are actually going to ride on the backdrop of the mineral wealth that we've got as a nation to try and recreate what is called an investment for themselves. You know, the misfortune that we have is that we have a government that does not want to listen to opinions of Zambians who understand even mining investments to be given free counsel on how they can reorganize their investment uh, you know, arrangements with KCM. For them, they've taken a lead in trying to agree an investment portfolio with KCM in circumstances where Zambians don't even understand what is going to come out of there. Now it is becoming to be laid bare, you know, on the surface, that Vedanta is not about to spend a single dollar in the investment in KCM. What they would like to do possibly is to come and try and use the very resource that we have and create a basis for them to go out to the international market to go and borrow more dollars, millions of dollars, to come and purportedly invest in KCM. So like Mr. Mr. Kafaya has said, I think this government needs to sit you know, tight on its pedestal and begin to explain to the Zambians realistically whether we have mining investment or we don't have. And the misfortune is that if we don't exploit and develop our mines and mineral wealth properly, it, it's, a, it's got a spiral effect. It affects everything else that we're we are doing as a Zambians because mining contributes more than 60% of our GDP. From the time that UPND came into power up to now, we've never seen any discernible mining activity taking place. That's why whatever they try to do with the magic, with the dollars, you see that it only works for about four or five days. It begins to slump up again. And it's, it's purely because the major economic sector of the country has not been allowed to take hold and begin to return for the Zambians. So I think I'm, I agree with Honorable Kapoya. You as journalists must take an interest in finding out what is going on with the Mopani investment, what is going on with KCM investment. Mine today is to try and speak briefly <coughs> about um, what um, the failure you know, to resolve the Mao Samba saga is causing <coughs> the nation. You know, we had said at the beginning of this journey that the stakeholders, the state actors must take a keen interest in what happened on the 24th of October, 2023, when Mao Samba and his collaborators purportedly created, you know, a retreat by which they wanted to take over, you know, violently leadership of Patriotic Front. Unfortunately, immediately they did that, this government started assisting them 
to try and entrench themselves in positions of leadership of the patriotic front. Here, where we were sitting at Parliament, our leadership was disrupted. They created, the, you know, their own stooges in Parliament who are now purportedly providing leadership in the opposition. Honorable Mundubire, who we continue to recognize as leader of opposition, is no longer leader of opposition as far as this house is concerned. If you go to the register of societies, the registered particulars of patriotic front have been changed without following due process of the law. What we had done ourselves to create leadership in PF has been shoved by the side and they have created a purport of leadership themselves by putting Mao Sampa and his collaborators on the list of you know, office bearers. Unfortunately for them, the very people that engineered that scheme have now come to the public and said, we did something illegal. You have heard for yourselves that these boys are actually ashamed to stand here and begin to address the nation on these individuals called Chama America and Mr. Ground. These are individuals who, well, the moment they started making public statements, we should have, dis we should have dismissed them you know, as incorrigible individuals. But unfortunately, they, they were allowed to scheme something that the UPND had sponsored, and the UPND grabbed it like a relay and made it their own program. These young boys now have come to the public and have made it very, very clear that they were sponsored to go and do what they were doing. Of course, out of threats, out of fear of being victimized by the UPND, they are trying to distance the UPND from what they did. But every Zambian who has been able to observe what is going on knows that those boys could never have done what they did without being pushed by the UPND. But they have now made very you know, frightening disclosures of how they tried to skim you know, the stealing of the leadership of the patriotic front. A decent government, led by a decent president, would put themselves in check when such information becomes available to the surface. And in agreeing with Honorable Kafuai, the president will have difficulties now trying to create, you know, a story that UPND still have, have a moral bearing to lead this nation. Their moral right to lead this nation has collapsed with what has been revealed by Mr. Brown, Mr. Ground, and the Chama America. Those young boys have admitted committing criminality. We have filed complaints against them in police. We have filed complaints against Miles Samba in police. The police have instructions not to arrest these individuals. So it is up to the Zambians now to begin to make judgment of who is right and who is wrong between the UPND and government and the Patriotic Front, which has religiously ensured we comply with the law. We've been complying with the law by taking these cases to court. We have challenged the judicature to decide or deliberate on these matters and give us decisions that are going to guide what we're going to do going forward. Interestingly, yesterday, the, the last couple of days, to the last two days, you've heard Mao Sampa, who in continuing to gallop you know, on, the, on the democratic space, has made decisions through his Secretary General purportedly to expel or to accept, not even to expel, but to accept the resignation of two members of parliament for the patriotic front from this house. They have written a letter to the speaker saying that Honorable Cassandra for Bangweru constituency and Honorable Meresiana Piri for Miranzi constituency have resigned. This speaker here in this office is not sitting with any letter of resignation from both these members of parliament. But there's a letter written, you know, gallibly by somebody who is a secretary general for Mao Sampa's, you know, um, collaborators to the speaker saying these individuals have, have resigned and have accepted the resignation. We knew there was going to be a showdown. We knew there was going to be drama going about what transpired in the past. So he, as a party that again complies with the law, we did the only thing we could possibly do because we respect the rule of law. We have gone to court on behalf of these two individuals. We have taken action against Mr. Sampa. We have taken action against Mr. Ngona for this decision that I've made to purportedly expel people over whom they've got no powers to preside. It remains to be seen. You know, whether the judiciary is going to rise to this occasion. You see, we are now clogging the courts with court cases. And this is happening because the people who are actually wrongdoers, the people who are actually uh, causing us to become victims of, you know, uh, uh, of mud slinging in the political party, have been embraced by this government. They have been given protection. If you go around where Mayo Sampa is right now, he's got police protection. If you go around where Mr. Chavinga is right now, he's got police protection. I think even Ngona also has got this, That's the only way they can do what they're doing. So we are now headed for a showdown as a nation, where if the judiciary is not going to help this country to resolve this problem, which is now beginning to blow up, because it started a small problem. They didn't resolve it. It has now been growing. It's, it threatens to engulf almost everybody. The supporters of Patriotic Front are watching this with, you know, that the demands of justice, that justice of this case demands. But we are very, very expectant 
that everything that is going to happen is going to happen in accordance with the rule of law. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable um, Chisanga. By our checks and balances, uh, how we highlight or indeed debate the motion that uh, will come uh, before us. Uh, Honorable Kafuaya, on behalf of the PF members of Parliament, uh, was uh, 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 tasked to bring out issues, the issues that he had discussed comprehensively on radio yesterday on 5FM, especially that uh, those issues would relate to what the President would be talking about. Uh, disappointingly and without shame, uh, the presiding officer ignored Honorable uh, Kafuaya. It's Honorable Kafuaya's right to speak on the floor of the House. It's his constitutional right to represent the people of Zambia and the people of Lunte. But we, the misfortune that uh, we face today is that presiding officers actually think they are the Alpha and the Omega in that house. And they believe that um, uh, based on what they are agreeing with the executive, they believe they are going to silence the opposition in that house. Uh, I wish to say this, uh, especially to Madam Speaker. The past couple of weeks, we've just been watching in silence the conduct of business on the floor of the house. And we've come to the realization that uh, there will be no amount of persuasion, no amount of negotiation that will cause Madam Speaker and other uh, presiding officers to give members of the opposition a chance to do that which they were elected for. So we are now announcing to you, Madam Speaker, that um, we will not allow ourselves to be packed away, yet our members sent us to Parliament to debate. We are saying we will come back to the House. We have agreed on certain strategies to ensure that if the freedom to speak cannot be given to us freely, we will use force to get that freedom. Because even the Bible says, uh, for the people of God, suffered persecution therefore the violent shall take it by force and we will call it, we will implement that particular biblical uh, verse to proclaim and claim our freedom in the house uh, it's very very important uh, uh, i think we've said this time and again to the nation countrymen and women it's not just about talking our talking in parliament or the lack of it is what has caused the problems that we face today. Today we are in problems because your members, like uh, Honorable Kafuaya, who would stand on the floor and speak fiercely, Honorable George Isanga, who come and speak on behalf of the people of uh, Lukasha, can no longer speak. As long as the presiding officer, if the speaker is uncomfortable with what you're going to say, or she suspects you may not be a praise singer, you'll not be given a chance. So it's very, very unfortunate, uh, countrymen and women. And I want to commend you, the media. You've always been on hand. We've been able to project certain messages to our people because you are there. Uh, but like I said, we'll get back to that house. Uh, we'll not say when. And ensure that we violently uh, claim for the freedom that we should have on the floor of that house. Now, um, those that took time to read a letter that was authored by Osida. Uh, should be very concerned because that letter uh, cited the three heads of our three org, org, arms of government being the executive where President Daka and HDM was cited, the legislature where uh, Madam Nelly Mutu was cited, the judiciary where uh, State Council Chief Justice Mumadila was cited, uh, requesting the US to consider sanctions on these three individuals. The letter went further to cite the uh, commissioner for um, the electoral commission of Zambia. So when you read the letter in totality, you realize that we have a very big challenge as a country. Because this has never happened since independence. We actually expected the honor of the vice president to rise on the floor of the house and issue a ministerial statement. In a ministerial statement, she should have been assuring the nation that this parliament will continue 
to represent the people of Zambia because Madam Speaker will continue being there and uh, that uh, something will be done so that she can escape the sanctions. We would have loved her honor the Vice President to assure us that members of the public will continue to get justice from the courts and that the Chief Justice will continue presiding over the courts because they are taking steps and measures advising the judiciary to see how the Chief Justice can change his course so that he also escapes sanction. We would have loved to get an assurance from our Vice President that His Excellency the President has since reflected upon the number of issues, the many issues that have been highlighted, and that uh, this time is going to say something that we can believe. That this time he would have repented and he would tell the nation something that they can actually walk away with. And because of that, he may escape sanctions that are suggested in that letter. But the Vice President opted to keep quiet, allowing the President to come and address the nation tomorrow. If you followed what Honorable Kafoya said, it's very difficult for us to discern or indeed imagine how the president to convince the Zambian people that as a country we have made progress. Because remember, the constitutional provision talks about him coming to report on the progress made. Meaning that we must have moved from point A to point B towards C and D. We, yes, in 12 months, in the, in the, in the past 12 months. Uh, what will the president say tomorrow? I actually want to agree uh, with those that uh, uh, have gone ahead to suggest that the president should actually postpone tomorrow's address to the nation. I do not think that uh, he will be ready by tomorrow, given the many issues that have come out. Because countrymen and women take it. President Daka and HM has been cited in that case. The Chief Justice has been cited in that case. The Speaker of this Assembly has been cited in that case. Minister of Affairs, Home Affairs is in that letter. Yes, yes, yes. ECZ is in that letter. PPP is in that letter. Inspector, Inspector General Police is in that letter. When you look at uh, these individuals and these officers in total, you will agree with me that we are talking at the country as a whole. So meaning that there is something seriously wrong with this country so far as governance is concerned. And uh, there's something wrong with this country insofar as the implementation of national values and principles are concerned. So what will the president come and talk about tomorrow? We want to uh, re-echo the sentiments by others that the president should consider postponing this particular address maybe by another two weeks. It's a constitutional, it's a constitutional mandate that he addresses parliament. The fact that they moved the text from last week to this week is enough precedent for them to be able to move it maybe by another two weeks so the president can be can be ready. Now, if we, I take you back to Article 9.2, if you look at Article 9.2, Article 9.2 is actually couched in mandatory term. You must wonder, why didn't the Constitution say the president may come? The Constitution said, shall. Sure. So underscore the word sha. And the operative word there is progress. To come and brief the nation on the progress that is made. So what it ideally means is that uh, it's incumbent upon the president that that 12 months, he should uh, ensure that he actually makes progress in readiness to come and address. That's the reason why uh, Article 9 was couched But in this particular case, if you listen to the clergy, you listen to civil society, I think the country is in reverse gear. The country is in reverse gear, and uh, even as, um, uh, you know, we, we are having a caucus with the members of parliament uh, from the PDF, uh, we had a difficult time to convince them to attend, sit and listen to the president address the nation tomorrow. After hours of discussion, Members of parliament reluctantly agreed to sit and listen to the president because they actually know that there is nothing much that the president will bring to the table. And uh, out of uh, morality on our part, as members of the PF, we decided that we are going to attend 
tomorrow's State of the Nation address. Otherwise, it was a very, very difficult uh, uh, task. The Honorable Chisang, the Honorable Kafuaya, Kassandu and Kampiongo went out of their way to convince members. Members just refused. The members of parliament said they've had enough of rhetoric. The members of parliament were saying they do not want to waste their time. Because the president says one thing and does the exact opposite. For how long will we come to this same parliament, the president coming with the same text, with minor amendments, just reading it for the sake of it? And yet the fact that it's in the constitution is expected that some minimal progress should be made. But in this particular case, look at what happened to our country. Every other day, the implementation of Article 259, Honorable Kafua said, how would the president talk about unity when you take lists of chief executive officers, commissioners and the rest of them, and you look at their names? How would the president, and the permanent secretaries, when you look at the names, you know, from permanent secretaries, directors and institutions, CEOs, how would the president gonna courage talk about national unity? How? How would he even talk about that? You talk about democracy. Registration of UCA is a very big problem. But the president wants to come and talk about democracy when he comes tomorrow. How would he even do that? Human dignity. People are dying of hunger. Because the president that kind of Hichilema respected dollars. He respected dollars from Congo. 15 million dollars from Congo. And yes, and, and, and so down Ghana, yes. How would you talk about human dignity when the people are, are suffering? And they're suffering not because of drugs. They're suffering because of the bad decisions that the um, UPND, uh, you know, uh, yes. So what are those proceeds from Congo? Eh? Are they calling them proceeds of Congo? They have, we have two, proceeds of crime and proceeds of Congo. Eh? So the proceeds of Congo, in the sum of 15 million, are the reason why our people are suffering today. Yes. So we want the president to uh, reflect seriously on, um, on this and consider uh, postponing the event so that maybe he can uh, prepare. Uh, and uh, naturally, as Zambians were a Christian nation, uh, a confession will suffice. We we'll forgive him if the president came stood or sat on the floor of that house tomorrow and said, Dear Zambians, it has now come to my realization that whereas I thought I was the Alpha and the Omega, I was the omniscient, omnipotent individual in this Present. country and omnipresent that would know and know everything, I now have come to realize that I'm just but human. And because I'm human, I'm not immune to error. I've erred a great deal by exporting maize. I have made mistakes when I made decisions to export power. I have made a number of mistakes by sending people to jail and prison on frivolous grounds. The Zambian people shall listen and forgive the president. We can have a new start. If the president insists on going ahead with tomorrow's uh, the State of the Nation address, let him abandon the text that was prepared. It will be very embarrassing. Read the letter from Osida. The letter from Osida, when you unpackage it, it doesn't matter whether one does not like the authors of that letter. Focus on the content. Hate the messenger, but focus on the message. That text that is in that letter resonates with every other Zambian that I know. We spoke to a number of people, and a number of people agreed. So, if the president insists that you go ahead with the State of the Nation address, we want to request his excellency the president. Let him abandon the text that was prepared by the technocrats. Proceed and uh, uh, tender an apology to the Zambian people. Ask for a fresh start, a new start, a start that will be devoid of lies and fake promises. A start or a new beginning that will focus on telling the truth. A new beginning that will bring about a true national unity. A new beginning that will bring to an end the purging that is going on in the ministries. A new beginning. A new beginning that will not be focused on people's names before they can be given opportunities. It should be a new beginning that will speak to the true one Zambia, one nation. That is the minimum that would expect from his ex the president tomorrow as he comes.
if he insists on going ahead with his uh, with address. Yeah. So colleagues, I, I just thought that um, it was very important. We were very disturbed. Honorable Kafai was our envoy today. He was our ambassador. He was a PF ambassador to deliver a message. We all stood down so that he delivered that message. So the voice of the Patriotic Front uh, Party was suppressed by Madam Speaker's decision. But how can that be? How can we, <laughs> the entire nation, collapse? <laughs> you know, because Madam Nelly Muti has said so. So we all must bow and say, okay, it's done. No, that can't happen. It will not happen. I think this has only happened for now. Yeah. Like we, we talked in the caucus, let's observe and see how far she can go. Before you conclude, yes. the leader of opposition, I just wanted to make my own recommendation yes. to the president. Uh, for me, I have only two options to offer. First, if the president is going to come tomorrow, uh, I, I've had the, the postponement proposals, it's, they are becoming louder. louder. But if he does decide to come, one, he should come with his conscience, full consciousness. Come to the house and just come and say, I have made no progress in the past four months. Oh yeah, but that's fair enough. That's, that's, that's fair enough. That's yeah. recommendation number one. Secondly, he can decide to leave his conscience at state house or at the, the so-called community house and come to the house without a conscience. He can just come and say whatever he wants. Those are my two recommendations. Read the text. He can come and read the, or say whatever he wants because the conscience will have been left where? Could you? Yes. They will have no problem. Yes. Thank you so much. Please, I'm sorry, Yes. No, no, no. I, I, I just thought that uh, I, I want to assure you, uh, and through you, uh, all members of parliament from the PF, that um, uh, Madam Speaker and other presiding officers have got to reflect upon their actions. They should understand that, um, firstly, the component on matters of urgent public importance is a very important component. And uh, it's not up to one individual to decide that I'll choose who I want. They're representatives. You know, we must, and when we've come up with a system, we have a post system, first come the uh, first step. Why should, uh, because the speaker does not like you, Kapwai, okay, uh, she does not like how you represent the people of London. It's not up to her to pick who should. And that's the reason why today we have a shortage of minimum and maize. Because the presenting officers were choosing those that were praising them. And today we have no medicines in hospitals. Today we have no maize. Today we have no power. Had the speaker been allowing people that were truly representing the people, those problems would be cured. And I want to present the most such a full responsibility. What is happening today? Okay, we cannot even shy away, uh, uh, you know, from that. The presiding officers of this parliament must take responsibility for the minimum shortage today, for the maize shortages today, for the export of power today, for the exchange rate today, for the medicines today. Because of that behavior, the behavior of not allowing. Honorable Kafuaya, Honorable Chisang, and everybody else to express themselves. And keep coming in check. Keep coming in check. We all can't be praise singers. They, should, they have a reason why they're praise singers. For goodness sake. We are here to represent the Zambian people. So presiding officers of the Zambian parliament must take full responsibility. No wonder they are in every letter, every letter that is written, when somebody is complaining about the executive, the legislature has to be there. I mean, what kind of system are we running? Why should the three organs of the state should all be lumped together? Now this is very, very unfortunate. It's unheard of. It's either citing the judiciary separately or citing the executive separately and the legislature. In this particular case, there's a golden thread where they're all cited in one transaction. It's very, very unfortunate. As a country, we must be concerned. We look forward to a judiciary that will be radical in its own way. There is what you call judicial radicalism. It's there. There is judicial radicalism where the judiciary senses that there's something wrong with the executive. But we need to change the course and chart a new course. The judges, the judiciary begin to make judgments in a manner that will redeem a country. Yes. There is judicial activism, judicial uh, radicalism. So if 
our current judicial system cannot even resolve straightforward, straightforward matters like the Honorable uh, Mao Sampasaga, then every Zambian should be worried. It's actually a shame that um, our Chief Justice could be cited for sanction. And yet that's where we all are supposed to be running. Sanctuary. It's a sanctuary for us all. But where we're supposed to be running, the man at the helm of the institution that he cited in the letter for sanctions. Yeah, so uh, I, I believe, like my colleagues have said, I think uh, our leaders should have a conscience. Uh, the heads of the judiciary, the heads of the legislature, and the executive. They should not take the text in the letter authored by Osida lightly. I think they've raised a number of issues, and that letter has gone viral. It's on the international platform. Uh, we can try to hide, as State Council Sakuiva said, you can behave like little children, put your hands on your face and hide behind your fingers and believe nobody can see you. But I think as a country, it's high time that uh, we came clean and accepted that uh, something is wrong and something must be done. We must begin and have a new beginning. We have requested the president to come and tender his apology on the floor of the house uh, for the many things that have happened in this very short period of time. We can have a new beginning. We can actually you know, take this country to higher heights if we started uh, you know, uh, that way. Uh, so, colleagues, uh, thank you once again uh, you know, for having shown up at short notice. Yeah. And Honorable Kafoya, I hope that uh, you've been able to... To, to, to yeah, tell yeah. the people what I should have told you. That's why. Right. Uh, on the platform. And, and I must also commend you, Honorable. Um, ordinarily, with what happened, that normally has angered members of parliament. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have seen members of parliament mm -hmm. misconduct themselves because of being suppressed. Mm -hmm. I must commend you. You remained very cool. Uh, and uh, I was worried. And, you know, I said, my goodness, my little brother now, who he would turn parliament upside down because of this injustice. But once again, I mean, I can only, I can only thank you for your, for, for, for your, for your, for your demeanor. You know, thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank you. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.